Evolve and Well. One of the most interesting rifles in my collection you may never have heard of unless you're in Norway or Sweden or Denmark or maybe Finland. And as I've mentioned before, these are remarkable gun making and hunting countries. Anyway, it's a Lakelander and I have different models and what usually happens with me anyway is I take an interest in a particular design and then kind of put the word out and people get back to me uh, with different variations and versions of rifles. As I said, you may never have heard of a Lakelander rifle. This particular rifle says made in Finland. In a moment I'll show you another rifle which is sold under the name Weiberger and it's made in Sweden but it's very similar to the Lakelander which is made in Finland. And then there's another rifle that's sold under the name Kongsberg and I have some friends from the Scandinavian countries and not to mention um, people on the channel and patrons and they explained to me that there were a series of bankruptcies and corporate intrigues which are typical in business and that explains the shift from Lakelander to Varberger to Kongsbert and I'm not sure I have that in time sequence. I don't know which one came first. Maybe you can help me and tell me. In any event, uh, quite a remarkable rifle considering that it has all the features that the most modern rifles try to accomplish and it also has a rotary magazine so you can see the short bolt lift the um, nine locking lugs all seem to engage and I test that by various means sometimes it's quite primitive I just paint the back of the lugs with whiteout and then see if the whiteout has been removed after I close the action and if it has I assume there's contact uh, all of these rifles have mechanical problems, so if you notice something isn't working, that's because they were sold to me that way. And um, I, I actually enjoy working on them. Anyhow, when I first handled the Lakelander, I noticed you know, no floor plate, no magazine, this unusual button, which immediately reminded me of the Malacher Schoenauer. So I'll set the Lakelander down and we return to the classic Mannlicher Schoenauer which you've seen before entirely different locking system I mean it's a turning bolt but it has two locking lugs it's not a shallow bolt lift but it does have a rotary magazine and that's what caught my eye with the Lakelander and I'm assuming that whoever designed the Lakelander had the Schoenauer magazine in mind and you can see that as I depress the, what amounts to a follower, this rotary magazine places the cartridge in that circular pattern. These guns never jam because every cartridge is handled independently of every other cartridge. This is very expensive. This is a heavy component. It's all steel. And I have the highest opinion, as most people do, of the Malacher Schoenauer. So when I looked at the Lake Lantern, um, magazine now this is actually out of a Varberger but they're very similar this is this is the rotary function and the cartridges simply curl along this radius and this is the release button now you probably have noticed this is smaller action and I'll explain why in a moment but getting back to the original Lakelander I mean what a fundamentally excellent design the, the everything that you would want to accomplish, the shallow bolt lift, the locking lugs, bolt release, smoothness of the action, um, the stock design, the trigger is excellent. I have no idea why they discontinued these or why there was some kind of corporate complexity in continuing with the production of these. But this is the Lake Lander and if you happen to come across one, the ones that are around that I've seen seem to be in superb condition. The stock design is probably influenced by Weatherby, but we're talking about those decades where many rifles were influenced by Weatherby, so that's nothing surprising. 
I can't speak for the accuracy of these, but I have two others uh, that in the meantime are going to other owners and they were extremely accurate rifles, but that doesn't surprise me because Finland makes Tikas and Finland just seems to, or the people of Finland seem to know how to make rifles and some people think they make the best rifles in the world. Uh, this is another, you now this one I shouldn't say that too quickly and I have to read every time to make sure that I'm not misleading you. So this is Lakelander made in Sweden. So this must be after that corporate shift. And now you can see how they they put that rotary magazine kind of beautifully underneath the action. This is the release. So if I didn't say so, the you load this, you don't have to push a button to dump them in the snow underneath you. And you don't have to have a removable magazine which can be dumped in the snow completely. You just push this button and all the cartridges are tossed out into your hand, much as they are in the Malakushan hour. And that feature, of course, allows for what I think is the most sensible stock design. The bottom of the stock is solid, and it could be made shallower if they had wanted to, but I guess they wanted a certain magazine capacity. Now getting to the action I was showing you before, you can see that there's something odd going on here. So this is an extremely scarce, um, I believe this one's a Farberger. If, if you notice, it's covered with something greasy. So that's me, that's a release agent. Um, and I'll explain why there's a release agent. So this rifle came in this stock. And you can see somebody has cut here, replaced the cheek piece, the comb, the butt plate is gone or recoil pad. I think it has some screws or nails in there. Um, the inletting isn't that bad really and then it's split up front here so I thought well if, if, if there's not too much involved I'll just somehow get a better stock together and this closed bottom of the stock makes a big difference so I just grabbed as I've shown you before a Remington ADL action and it took a you can see it's closed at the bottom like the Lake Lander and the Varberger so I thought it can't be that bad I should be able to adapt the, this stock to this barreled action but when you're doing that work you have to close all recesses with modeling clay and then coat everything with a release agent and I'm not finished this but you can see it fits in there not perfectly, I, I haven't finished work on this, and I'll just use the ADL trigger guard, which I thought I had on the table. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, there's a, a little bridge of wood holding it back, but I think altogether that's a good rifle. And you can see the scarce mini action compared to the larger action. It's always hard to have all these parts together. But you can see the mini action is a lot smaller and this is in 6 PPC. So sometimes you get guns that look really bad, like that stock I showed you. But the metal components and the bore are fine, so then it's worth it to put some, some work into the whole project. And that's why you see the clay and the release agent. And um, there's a slight bridge here that's blocking the trigger pull. But I do that in the evenings. Um, one thing I should mention, you'll see here, this uh, recoil luck. So uh, this is me. I, I just filed that by hand out of some bar stock that I had because this is the original recoil lug. It's the most unusual contraption that I've seen. That doesn't mean it's a bad action. I think they were trying to do something. Like this is actually the recoil lug. This, this little folded piece, this actually sits in here, and then this sits in the stock. I'll show you. It's really, you know, you are clearly highly intelligent people. So that's how the recoil lug sits for that for that Farberger. And I mean, I'm not sure why they didn't just. I don't. I don't know if we picked that up, but that's how it's supposed to work. But I thought.
we've got half a dozen parts and pieces and this is flopping around in there so I simply um, I can't remember how I attach this I think it's just with silver solder but right now I think it's just epoxy so I'll do that next uh, anyway that it gives you an idea of the kinds of things that you do and I believe that it'll be an extremely accurate rifle everything else about it was it's properly crowned. I don't know if we can clo uh, focus in on the barrel, but you can see it's a beautifully crowned barrel. And if I'm not wrong, this rifle says made in Sweden. So obviously a lot of kind of intrigue with, with the three different types of uh, manufacturers, Lakelander, Varberger, uh, Kongsberg. This one is all complete. Somebody burnt the stock here somehow, which is no big deal. That can all be restored. But getting back to the theme of some of the videos on my channel, these are not expensive rifles to own. Uh, they're probably as accurate as any rifle out there. And compared to the more modern rifles, there's just so much more to them. They, they aren't perfect. Like I have to say that recoil lug is a little bit weak, but that doesn't mean that they don't work. They, you don't have to do what I did. I was just making a new stock, so I thought I'll modify the way the rifle handles recoil. And there might have been some manufacturing imperative that I'm not aware of. Anyway, I don't want it to be too dry. We've got a lot of parts and components on the table. But uh, if you can remember those names and you come across something on a used gun rack, Lakelander, and who knows what people say about things they don't understand. The Lakelander is excellent. The Varberger is fine. Some slightly different features in the bolt release system. And the Kongsberg is the same. The, and there are beautiful target versions of these uh, sporter versions that remind me of the T3 sporter. But I'd rather have one of these. And um, not, not easy to come by because the numbers were less back then. But I thought I'd share that with you. It's a remarkably fine handling rifle and has everything that you would actually look for in a bolt-action rifle. And then you own something unique, something you won't see um, in a Walmart or any other place. And um, I think these things tend to go up in value as people become aware of them. So that's about it. Thank you for watching, please. It's more and more important that you push the subscribe button. And if you can join me on Patreon, that's even better. And um, the way to do that is all on the screen uh, in front of you when you're watching these videos. So thank you very much and we'll see you on the next video. Take care.